which has been the government of Pakistan. I'm sorry about that. And I'm trying to help, but, you know, I'm hoping... Well, you're doing an excellent job, Mr. Musavi. I mean, I mean, you are helping not only people of Pakistan, but the other Mexico and other countries. I mean, your services are great. And, uh, you know, it's uh, a great thing you are doing it. But I want to correct the dates when the meeting was held between you and General Malak and uh, General uh, Fais Hamid. Our sources are saying that Mr. Uh, Fais Hamid and Mr. Uh, General Malak was in London in those dates. So what was the exact dates you had those me meeting with these two generals? Um, there was, well, I, I, well, let's say, I mean, uh, I don't know if it was a general. He said he was a general. Um, he said he was Malik, and I said uh, every Pakistani, like every every British person, every other British person is a Smith, and every Pakistani and every other Pakistani is a Malik. So I have no reason to believe that he was or he was not a Malik. He certainly looked like a military type. He looked like a very fit person. His hand, the grip of the shake was very, very, uh, very firm. It was in the pre-COVID days where you could shake hands, um, mm -hmm. uh, and he was very articulate. And um, I answered the British Academy. He said something about, that. you know, I don't know. There was a, um, he, I, I met him in October of um, uh, 2018, and then um, initially, yes. And so we, we, um, uh, I, I'm sorry, I've given something at uh, 30 interviews. So uh, if I get dates wrong at the moment, because it's because I'm really exhausted. But uh, but uh, you can do better than that. You can read it in the newspaper today because the letter that we wrote to the government of Pakistan was printed today. It was leaked by NAB, by somebody. Somebody who's trying to uh, spin this thing selectively. But uh, let me not get dates and names wrong. I think the, it's documented contemporaneously and it's there. So um, you'll be able to. The one certainty is that uh, I think the significant story here isn't so much that the man came and tried to shake us down. The significant story is the government of Pakistan did nothing about it when we oh. reported it. They did nothing. That, that's the key question, I think. Yes, yes, it is. Uh, my next question is that, did you or anyone from your company had direct dealing with anyone from the ISI at any stage? No, definitely not. Definitely Def not. Okay. The only connection that we had with ISI was that they jointly, the joint investigation team that did the report to the Supreme Court of Pakistan in the aftermath of the experiment by the our papers and uh, that information became very handy to us in the proceedings. That information confirmed everything that we suspected about the um, apparent wealth of the Sharif family and all that. We had never any direct connections with ISI and there'd be no reason why we would. Okay. Well, let's move on to next one. One billion dollars was uh, transferred from Saudi Arabia to Singapore. And your information is that this money belonged to Nawaz Sharif. In 2019, it was claimed that Nawaz Sharif's release from prison was being negotiated in return for this money. But nothing of the sort happens and Nawaz Sharif was allowed to go abroad on medical grounds without paying any money or signing any undertaking to the efforts. Do you still believe that the money is in Singapore and it's belong to Nawaz Sharif? Well, let me ask you, let me answer this with a question to you. If you had a billion dollars of illicit money and it suddenly hit the press that you had a billion dollars, would you keep it there three years after the event? Of course you wouldn't. You move the money very quickly. So I have reason to believe the money was there and I have reason to believe that the money is not there. But it's very easy to find it. Because money doesn't disappear into thin air. It leaves a trace. It's called electronic footprint. We can find it. We can find it. If the government of Pakistan comes to me and says, find that money, and they are prepared to um, honor their commitment, well, I see signs that the Imran Khan government is different, and it's it's trying very, very hard to negotiate the minefield of um, illegality and uh, obscene lawlessness that defines the Pakistani political process. And if they mm. come, of People. For sure, we'll find the money. For sure, we will find the money. There's no doubt about that. And uh, I'd like to find the money for the people of Pakistan, but obviously some protocols must be adhered to if, if that happens.